let's take a look at leadership. For good reason, people continue to ask themselves and others what makes good leaders. As individuals, we seek more information on how to become effective leaders. Many people believe that leadership is a way to improve their personal, social, and professional lives. Organizations seek those with leadership ability because they believe they bring special assets to their organization and ultimately improve the bottom line. Leadership research is increasing dramatically and findings underscore that there's a wide variety of different theoretical approaches to explain the complexities of the leadership process. Some researchers conceptualize leadership as a trait or as a behavior, where others view leadership from an information processing perspective or relational standpoint. Leadership has been studied both quantitatively and qualitatively in many contexts. Collectively, these findings of leadership from all of these different areas provide a picture of a process that's far more sophisticated and complex than the often simplistic view presented in some popular leadership thinking. Leadership is a complex process having multiple dimensions. In the past 60 years, as many as 65 different classification systems have been developed to define the dimensions of leadership. One such classification system, directly related to our discussion, suggested that some definitions view leadership as the focus of group processes. From this perspective, the leader is at the center of the group change and activity and embodies the will of the group. Another set of definitions conceptualize leadership from a personality perspective, which suggests that leadership is a combination of special traits or characteristics that some individuals possess. In addition, some define leadership in terms of the power relationship that exists between leaders and followers. The components of this type of leadership include it being a process involving influence, occurring in groups, and involving common goals. Leadership is a process whereby an individual influences a group of individuals to achieve a common goal. Defining leadership as a process means that it's not a trait or a characteristic that resides in the leader, but rather a transactional event that occurs between the leader and follower. It's concerned with how the leader affects followers and the communication that occurs between leaders and followers. Leadership involves influencing a group of individuals who have a common purpose. Leadership includes attention to common goals. Leaders direct their energies towards individuals who are trying to achieve something together. Both leaders and followers are involved together in the leadership process. The trait perspective suggests that certain individuals have special innate or inborn characteristics or qualities that make them leaders. Some of the personal qualities used to identify leaders include unique physical factors, personality features, and other characteristics. The trait viewpoint conceptualizes leadership as a property or a set of properties possessed in varying degrees by different people. The process viewpoint suggests that leadership is a phenomenon that resides in the context of the interactions between leaders and followers and makes leadership available to everyone. As a process, leadership can be observed in leader behaviors and can be learned. These two common forms of leadership are called assigned leadership and emergent leadership, respectively. Leadership that is based on occupying a position in an organization is assigned leadership. Team leaders, plant managers, department heads, directors, and administrators are examples of these assigned leaders. 
when others perceive an individual as the most influential member of a group or an organization, regardless of the individual's title, the person is exhibiting emergent leadership. Some of the positive communication behaviors that account for successful leader emergence include being verbally involved, being informed, seeking others' opinions, initiating new ideas, and being firm but not rigid. The individuals who are more dominant, more intelligent, and more confident about their own performance within general self-efficacy were more likely to be identified as leaders by other members of their task group. Leadership emergence may also be affected by gender-biased perceptions. Individuals emerge as leaders in a group when they become most like the group prototype. When a person is engaged in leadership, that person is a leader, whether leadership was assigned or has emerged. People have power when they have the ability to affect others' beliefs, attitudes, and courses of action. Although there are no explicit theories in research literature about power and leadership, power is a concept that people often associate with leadership. It's common for people to view leaders, both good and bad, and people in positions of leadership as individuals who wield power over others, and as a result, power is often thought of as synonymous with leadership. Changes in culture have meant followers demand more from leaders and leaders have to respond. Position power is the power a person derives from a particular office or rank in a formal organizational system. Personal power is the influence capability a leader derives from being seen by followers as likable and knowledgeable. In discussions of leadership, it's not unusual for leaders to be described as wielders of power, as individuals who dominate others. Dimensions of leadership treat power as a relational concern for both leaders and followers. We pay attention to how leaders work with followers to reach common goals. Coercion involves the use of force to effect change. Coercion often involves the use of threats, punishment, and negative reward schedules and is most seen as a characteristic of the dark side of leadership. In our discussions of leadership, coercive people are not used as models of ideal leadership. Leaders who use coercion are interested in their own goals and seldom are interested in the wants and needs of followers. Using coercion runs counter to working with followers to achieve a common goal, the very definition of influence we use to define leadership. Leadership involves influence, and so does management. Leadership entails working with people, which management entails as well. Leadership is concerned with effective goal accomplishment, and so is management. In general, many of the functions of management are activities that are consistent with the definition of leadership that we use, but leadership is also different from management. Management was created as a way to reduce chaos in organizations, to make them run more efficiently and effectively. The primary functions of management were planning, organizing, staffing, and controlling. These functions are still representative of the field of management today. Management is about seeking order and stability. Leadership is about seeking adaption and constructive change. To be effective, organizations need to nourish both competent management and skilled leadership. To manage means to accomplish activities and master routines, whereas to lead means to influence others and create visions for change. Leaders and followers work together to create real change, whereas managers and subordinates join forces to sell goods and services. Leadership is distinguished by motivating intrinsically, creative thinking, strategic planning, tolerance of ambiguity, and being able to read people. 
Although there are clear differences between management and leadership, the two constructs do overlap. Leadership is a highly valued phenomenon that is very complex. The competent common to nearly all classifications is that leadership is an influence process that assists groups of individuals towards goal attainment. Because both leaders and followers are part of the leadership process, it's important to address issues that confront followers as well as issues that confront leaders. In prior research, many studies focused on leadership as a trait. The trait perspective suggests that certain people in our society have special inborn qualities that make them leaders. In contrast, some suggest that leadership is a process that can be learned and that is available to everyone. Two common forms of leadership are assigned and emergent. Assigned leadership is based on formal title or position in an organization. Emergent leadership results from what one does and how one acquires support from followers. Leadership as a process applies to individuals in both assigned roles and emergent roles. Personal power comes from followers and includes referent and expert power. Followers give it to leaders because followers believe that leaders have something of value. Coercion runs counter to leadership because it does not treat leadership as a process that emphasizes working with followers to achieve shared objectives. Leadership and management are different concepts that overlap. They are different in that management traditionally focuses on the activities of planning, organizing, staffing, and controlling, whereas leadership emphasizes the general influence process. Some researchers go as far as to argue that managers and leaders are different types of people, with managers being reactive and less emotionally involved, and leaders being proactive and more emotionally involved. The overlap between leadership and management is centered on how both involve influencing of a group of individuals in goal attainment. 